nothing we did seems to help and we were really worried we could see the effect this was having on his self-esteem we tried to be encouraging and helpful and positive but after repeated failures we finally drew back and tried to look at the situation on a different level at this at this time in my professional role i was involved in leadership development work with various clients throughout the country in that capacity i was preparing bi-monthly programs on the subject of communication and pre perception for IBM's executive development program participant. As I researched and pre prepared these presentation, I became particularly interested in how perceptions are formed, how they behave. This led me to a study of expectancy theory and self-fulfilling prophecies or the PIG Pygmalion effect and to a realization of how deeply embedded our perception are. It taught me that we must look at the lens through the which see the world as well as at the world we see that the lens itself shapes how we interpret the world. As Sandra and I talk about the concept I was teaching at IBM and about our own situation, we begin to realize that what we were doing to help our son was not in harmony with the way we really saw him. When we honestly examine our deepest feeling, we realize that our perception was the was that he was basically inadequate somehow behind no matter how much the we work on our attitude and behavior our efforts were ineffective because despite our actions and our words what we really communicated to him was you are incapable you have to be protected you begin to realize that if we wanted to change the situation we first had to change ourselves and to change ourselves effectively, we first had to change our perception, the personality and character it takes. At the same time, in addition to my research on perception, I was also deeply immersed in an in-depth study of the success literature published in the United States since 1776. I was reading or scanning literally hundreds of books, articles, and essays in fields such as self-improvement, popular psychology, and self-help. At my fingertips was the sum and substance of what a free and democratic people consider to be the key of successful living. As my study took me back through 200 years of writing about success, I noticed a startling pattern emerging in the content of the literature because of our own pain and because of similar pain I had seen in the lives and relationships of many people I had worked with through the year. I began to feel more and more that much of the success literature of the past 50 years was superficial. It was filled with social image cons consciousness techniques and quick fixes with social band aid and aspirin that address acute problems and sometimes even appear to solve them temporarily but left the underlying chronic problems untouched to feaster and resurface time again in stark contrast almost all the literature in the first 150 years or so focus on what could be called the character ethics as the foundation of success, things like integrity, humility, fidelity, temperance, courage, justice, patience, industry, simplicity, modesty, and golden rule. Benjamin Franklin's autobiography is presentative of the literature. Autobiography is presentative of that literature. It is basically the story of one man's effort to integrate certain principles and habits deep within his nature. 
the character ethics thought that there are basic principles of effective living and that people can only experience true success and enduring happiness as they learn and integrate these principles into their basic character but shortly after world war 1 the basic view of success shifted from the character ethics to what we might call the personality ethics success became more a function of personality or of public image of attitude and behavior skills and techniques that lubricate the process of human interaction this personality ethics essentially took two parts one was human and public relations technique and the other was positive mental attitude pma some of the philosophy was expressed in aspiring and sometimes valid maxim such as your attitude determines your at altitude smiling wins more friends than frowning and whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe it can achieve other parts of the personality approach were clearly manipulative even deceptive encouraging people to use technique to get other people to like them or to fake interest in the hobbies of others to get out of them what they wanted or to use the power look or intimidate their way through life some of this literature acknowledged character as an ingredient of success but tended to compartmentalize it rather than recognize it is foundational and catalytic reference to the character it take become mostly lip service the basic trust was quick fix influence techniques power strategies communication skills and positive attitude This personality ethic I began to realize was the subconscious source of the solution Sandra and I were attempting to use with our son as I thought more deeply about the difference between the personality and character ethics I realized that Sandra and I had been getting social mileage out of our children's good behavior and uh, and in our eyes this son simply didn't measure up our image of sex our image of ourselves and our role as good caring parent was even deeper than our image of our son and perhaps influence it there was a lot more wrap up in the way we were seeing and handle the problem than our concern for our son's welfare as son As Sandra and I talked, we became painfully aware of the powerful influence of our character and motives, and our perception of him. We knew that social comparison motives were out of harmony with our deeper value and could lead to conditional love, and eventually to our son's lessened sense of. self worth so we determined to focus our efforts on us not on our techniques but on our deepest motive and our perception of him instead of trying to change him we tried to stand apart to separate us from him and to sense his identity individuality separateness and worth through deep thought through deep thought and exercise of faith and prayers we begin to see our son in terms of his own uniqueness we saw within him layers and layers of potential that would be realized at his own pace and speed we decided to relax and get out of his way and let his own personality emerge we saw our natural role as being to affirm enjoy and value him we also con consciously work on our motives and cultivated internal source of security so that our own feeling of worth were not dependent on our children's acceptable behavior
as we lose up our old perceptions of our sins and develop value-based motives new feelings begins to emerge we found ourselves enjoying him instead of comparing or judging him we stop trying to clone him in our own image or measure him against social expectation we stop trying to kindly positively manipulate him into an acceptable social mold before because we saw him uh, as fundamentally adequate and able to cope with life and we stop protecting him against the ridicule of other